In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this, ultimately to this type of key. If that's interesting to you using the Blackmagic Ultimat 12 4K, sit down and take some notes. Let's get started. My name is Andre Dantzler and I'm the president of Socially You. We're a studio based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, making all kinds of videos, doing tons of green screen work. I can't wait to show you the exact process we're using to get this type of key that you see on the screen. Now, the thing about chroma key is it's a little different workflow as far as the sequence. And we wanna always start first with lighting the foreground, which is a little different than a lot of other productions where you're gonna light the background first and then push into the foreground of lighting the model. In our case, we're starting with the foreground and key to keying is lighting. But before we can get to lighting, we have to do step one, which is camera calibration. This is where we set the contrast. We go in and set our pedestal, change our white balance, and ensure our shutter speed is correct before we even turn on any lights. We wanna make sure the camera is set up exactly as it needs to be so that everything else we do has this strong base foundation. Step two is lighting. And what I'm doing right now is just bringing up some of our lights to light the talent first in the foreground. Once I have our talent lit correctly, now I'm just kind of looking at those images, but I want to move into step three, false color. Conveniently, we're trying to get the background set to around 44 IRE, which happens to be green. <laughs> so let's turn on false color. And you can see now as I'm making these adjustments, how much it's changing that background. I'm changing the lights that are focused on the background of the image. And what I'm trying to do is get as even as possible a solid green color so that I can know that I've actually exposed the background properly. In fact, we're trying to make our talent be in the pink and light gray with shadow signs in the green and dark gray. And I'm trying to get that background as even as possible. Step four, file clear. Now, this is when I'm now finally ready to touch the ultimate. I'm hitting clear and voila, already the image looks pretty great. Olivia's hairs are already pretty amazing looking. And this is before we've even adjusted any settings whatsoever. When I go to combine mat, you'll notice there's some noise in the background. In fact, if I zoom in a little here, you'll see that this noise is kind of happening and Ultimat calls that veil. And this veil results in some digital noise on the screen and it also kind of looks like a haze. I do this by choosing matte and veil, and then I'm adjusting this veil dial. As I move this veil down a little, you'll see it removes that haze. If I kind of go to an extreme, you'll notice it probably doesn't do too much because our key was already pretty great. I can double tap to reset it. And here you can see that I'm just gonna turn that veil down maybe around negative 4%. I really want this as close to zero as possible, as you continue to go down, it will degradate the image, especially around the edges. Step five, print through or false transparency. When I'm in the combined mat, I'm looking to make sure that you can't see any gray like this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to adjust the matte density or the black gloss. Black gloss is for darker images, especially things that would be reflective, but I've even seen just like a black shirt where I'm adjusting a little bit of black gloss to uh, take care of that. And matte density is the overall image, but it tends to go a little more towards the mid and lighter tones of the image. Now we got to work on the skin tone, and that's step six. Once I'm in flare one, I'm adjusting the skin tone. Here you can see, as I increase that skin tone to 100%, it introduces tons of green, but also brings back a little life into her face. So the default of 65, I'm usually bumping that up to around 67%. After I've done that, I'm going to the light warm, and there I'm bringing that usually almost always actually down a little. And you'll notice as I do that, it's taking away any green that we had on those edges and bringing them down a little bit. So see that uh, light warm uh, skin tone combination there. See how that's affecting her overall skin tone and uh, how it's changing the edging of her. So I want my skin tone to be around 67%, and I'm taking light warm, bringing it down. 10 or 20% from its default settings. 
After I've got her skin tone pretty good, look at that hair. It's looking pretty great inside here. It's taking away any of those green fringe edges. It's a really critical step and real power of the Ultimat. Next, I'm going to move into the black and white levels, starting with the background. Here, I'm going to move the black levels of the background down. And you can see you can certainly overdo this. It's a powerful thing to be able to control these exposure levels of black and white. So I start with my background first, get that where I want it. Then I move over to our foreground. And here I'm also choosing those black and white levels. And now I'm getting her black levels to match that of the background. This is a critical step to get right. There's no you know, perfect number setting. It all is an artistic choice based on how you want to have it. But here you can see. Now look, you can take those white levels and go really crazy with them. So be careful, don't overdo it. What I'm doing here is pressing Alt-1. And this lets me save the image. Now I'm gonna press File Clear just to reset it in Alt-2. And now as I toggle between one and two, you can see the before and after. Now we didn't, we kind of skipped a step. <laughs> I wanted to see how far I could go without sampling the wall. But here let's go in and sample the wall. And I'm using a dual cursor method where I'm sampling both sides of her face just to see how that looks. And um, you know, I think maybe that improves it just a little bit. Sometimes I use dual cursor, sometimes I just use the wall cursor, which is just a single point. That's really just a, you know, depends on the key to see. I'm gonna get Olivia, our talent, to step off of the screen for a second, and I'm going to use screen capture and screen correct, which is under matte, matte process screen capture. Now, on the new interface that changed just right after I recorded this, it prompts you uh, to make sure you wanna do this and just say yes. Now, this will do a great job of probably making it where you really don't have to use any veil at all. And so going back to program, we can see now how that looks. And screen correct is something we do whenever we have a camera locked down and it's not going to move. And I do this after I've set focus. If you have substantial focus breathing, that will also cause some trouble if you're continuously focusing. So now you can see I can turn that veil all the way off. And if I look at my combined mat, it looks amazing. So here we have it. Let's look at the final key. Isn't that amazing? Her hair looks great. I mean, each of those individual hairs and there is some green behind her that you're kind of seeing through, but let's zoom into 200%, but that's not green in the actual key. That's just the background that you see behind her there. Man, isn't that amazing? So that's it. That's our way of keying in real time using the Blackmagic Ultimat 12 4K. I really hope this has been useful to you. This is the video I wish I had when I started using the Ultimat. So if you're new to the Ultimat, congratulations. Uh, hopefully this has saved you a ton of time. Hey, we're a studio that's doing a lot of productions all the time. And we've decided, uh, because we don't have anything else to do, I guess, to create this whole other channel that's showing you behind the scenes. This is the same stuff that we wish we had when when we were starting our studio and so hopefully this is super helpful to you as you're looking at creating your own studio or implementing some of these things in your current productions so let us know in the comments what are some things that you're interested in seeing we're doing everything in virtual production we have six live tracked cameras we're using unreal engine behind the scenes and we're keying it all as you know in the ultimate if any of this stuff is useful or interesting to you certainly please consider subscribing and liking this and i can't wait to show you some of the other cool stuff we have in store. Thanks for watching.